Hi guys, it's uh, Dad O, Grampy here again, and I'm still here in my hotel room in Cor uh, Corbin, Kentucky, near Corbin. Um, but if you're paying attention, you will see that I have a different shirt on this time. Hmm. This is a very special shirt because I got it during a very special trip to the island of Maui in Hawaii. And it's from a national park called Haleakala National Park. And um, if you know anything about Hawaii, generally it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nice warm climate, uh, unless you start going up those mountains. And uh, well, sure enough, we were going on, are driving our way up one of the mountains there. And uh, the, the ranger station at the base of this park uh, was up at a point where it was already cold. So uh, they offered these shirts for sale and it was, uh, it was very, very helpful to ward off some of the cold from being, I don't know how many thousand feet up above we were, but it was really high and it was, but it was nice. We had a great view. Anyway, that's, I love this shirt because of the memories and cause it's a very nice shirt. Anyway, so last time I introduced the topic of, of listen, my son with that, uh, the words from that one Judy Rogers song. And so we're going to continue that theme. Uh, listen, my son, last time it was wisdom. And this time it's a, an application of wisdom that comes up with some uh, uh, very um, strong emphasis in the book of Proverbs and, um, and, and, and some very specific uh, detail about, uh, about what this particular trap looks like, how to notice it, how to steer clear of it. We find in Proverbs 5, in the first couple verses, he says, My son, be attentive to my wisdom. Incline your ear to my understanding, that you may keep discretion, and your lips may guard knowledge. For the lips of a forbidden woman drip honey, and her speech is smoother than oil, but in the end she is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death, her steps follow the path to the grave. She does not ponder the path of life, her ways wander, and she does not know it. <clears throat> and now, O oh sons, listen to me, and do not depart from the words of my mouth. Keep your way far from her, and do not go near the door of her house, lest you give your honor to others and your years to the merciless, lest strangers take their fill of your strength, and your labors go to the house of a foreigner. And at the end of your life you groan, when your flesh and body are consumed, and you say, how I hated discipline and my heart despised reproof. I did not listen to the voice of my teachers or incline my ear to my instructors. So there you have a, a, a narrative, a description of, of a father saying, listen to my wisdom here so you can avoid this, this disaster, uh, this waste of a life, this waste of your resources and your strength. And, um, and live with regrets. That's how I would sum up that, that, that Solomon, who tragically didn't even take his own wisdom in this, this, this whole matter, but saw enough that maybe he wrote this from a position of regret. And so um, there's probably not a, um, a man, a, man a, a, a woman, a woman, a dad or a mom, a man or a woman who grows up into maturity that doesn't have um, regrets in their life, things they wish they would have steered clear of, they wish they wouldn't have done. And so often, you know, we just want to keep our children from making those same mistakes. And I think that's kind of at the heart of much of the book of Proverbs. Um, this particular one gets pretty much two full chapters chapters five and chapter seven in the book of Proverbs, and I'll let you read them. But um, what I would want to um, bring out of, of Solomon's uh, choice to devote a lot of attention, there's probably more verses in the book of Proverbs that, that are devoted to this topic than any other. And so I'm going to be consistent with that and give it its due attention. And a lot of times, you know, it can get a little bit uncomfortable talking about moral things, uh, male-female relationships and sexual things and stuff like that. Um, 
and, and with good reason, there are things that are appropriate at certain ages and things that are appropriate at other ages or inappropriate for certain, you know, particularly younger ages. But um, we're going to keep it very family friendly here and just say that God has put into the heart of, of men and women to be, to have a need for love and affection and to feel close, to feel a, um, a deep, deep love for one special person. And we call that marriage. And not everybody gets married, but I think everybody can relate to the, the feeling, the need of being close to someone else, of wanting the affection and the admiration or the respect, the love of somebody special to them. And you can give and you can receive that. And it's very, very rewarding. Um, it's not limited to just husbands and wives. Um, but there's something very, very special God built into the attraction that men and women have for one another. And that's what Solomon is, is, is pointing to here. He's saying there's something very, very strong that's, that's like in your heart. And God put it there. And it's an attraction for the other sex. Boys toward girls, girls toward boys. And, and we all recognize that. I remember being a very little boy. Um, probably one of my first crushes was on Marianne on Gilligan's Island. Um, could have been Catwoman. I don't know. But I was a little boy. And I was, you know, just seeing these nice ladies on TV and well, Catwoman wasn't always so nice, but you know what I mean, right? Um, uh, mama could, Grammy could probably tell you about who first crush, what her first crush might've been Donny Osmond, right? So those things are just there. They, we find them, um, you know, just kind of percolating up on their own. And, um, if we don't understand that or we're not honest about that that can be a problem all right if we try and deny it's there but if we allow it to get too strong a hold of us if we pursue things that either you know god says it's not time yet or god says no you shouldn't do this but we run ahead that's when we can get in big big trouble and um many times so one reason why we we find ourselves susceptible to this trap is that a nobody told us nobody told us we shouldn't just go after whatever we want um the bible does your dad does your grandpa does right there are good things in life that god says no not yet or no not for you i've got something different or i've got this later for you but there are things that are good in life that might not be appropriate or for you or me at a given time in our life this this could very well be one of them um, the other, the, another way that we, um, we could fall prey to this is if we, uh, and another thing too is, is not only might people tell you it's not bad or it's not time, they might tell you, yes, it's good and you should go for as much of it as you can, wherever you can find it. That's not good either. So, um, what, I, what I would want you to be assured of is that if you find certain desires percolating up in your heart, especially concerning your attraction for, um, you know, for the other sex, um, God put it in there for a reason. He said, it's not good that a man should be alone. Therefore shall a man leave father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they too will become one flesh. And what God has joined together, let no man separate. All right, that's what God's, that there was God instituting and sanctifying relationships and love that men have, men have for women and women for men in godly marriage. And in Malachi, he said, there's a reason why I made them one. It was that they might have a godly offspring. So God built into marriage right into the whole, the whole design that it would be fruitful and multiply, that there would be something of, 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 of a multiplied long-term blessing and growth that would come out of the husband and the wife coming together. Now, um, in keeping with the, 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 the warnings of this, okay, and I would encourage you to read Proverbs 5 and 7 on your own time, it's, it's this. It's to recognize that 
uh, we can be um, duped. We can be tricked through beauty, through flattery. Someone can tell us something. Oh, you look really beautiful in that, you know, that outfit. Or, wow, you have pretty eyes, you know. Um, and that can, that, that flattery can like, ooh, you know, can make you feel good, right? And it can cloud your judgment from um, knowing what's, what's going on here. And because there are people who will use the power of their influence over us for their own selfish means. And um, this, this, this is one way. And so um, don't ever think that you are, you know, you might be impervious to this, this level of temptation because it's, you know, Paul again in the New Testament said, uh, take heed, let him that stands take heed lest he fall. And that pride goes before destruction. All right. So, um, our, our thinking we are like, we're good. We got no no vulnerability here um, is probably uh, just going to set us up for uh, a tragic, unexpected fall. So I will wrap up this little uh, this little dad talk by saying, um, seek your identity, your completeness in knowing that God loves you. And when when we are content and fully satisfied that that God loves us and we are contenting in His plan for us. We have the, you know, we have our greatest resource of recognizing and not being vulnerable to the appeals of those who um, don't have our best interests at heart. They may not be, you know, they might not think that they're, um, you know, doing wrong toward us. But if they're wanting to draw us into behavior or relationships that don't honor God first, they they can't really be good for us. And so. Be on guard for this one, guys and girls. Okay, it's a big one. And it can be a gateway into a whole train wreck of life if we fall in this one, especially early on. Um, there's there's always a price to be paid, all right? And if someone really loves you, if you really love someone else, you'll wait. God bless you.